Our primary focus has been on successfully addressing the economic challenges that face our industry. 2018 was a year of challenges and a year of changes, a year of industry successes and a year of setbacks for many due to weather. I don't know too much about cotton other than I want to grow a lot of it in this country. My administration is working very hard to help all of our wonderful farmers. We are announcing today a cotton gin cost share program for the 2016 crop. This industry has worked for decades to build a reputation as a reliable supplier of contamination-free cotton. And I hereby am signing the death certificate <laughs> of the pink bollworm by this action. We want the U.S. to be the supplier of choice of cotton fiber. We want this to be the cotton you trust. We want to be the cotton the world trusts. We want to be the driver of change to make the world a better place for future generations. You're doing important work in your communities and your voice matters in Washington, D.C. That is why it is important for us to be unified and to move in action when our industry comes under attack. With the help of the United Cotton Industry, I look forward to addressing the issues before us. Through it all, the Council addressed the multiple economic challenges facing the U.S. cotton industry and worked to provide near-term assistance via another GIN cost share program. Long-term stability also involved protecting the industry's farm policy priorities in the new Farm Bill as it was developed, debated, and signed into law in late 2018. The Council was very active on the trade front ranging from monitoring the development of the U.S.-Mexico-Canada agreement to discussions regarding China's market access. The implementation of the Market Facilitation Program, authorized by the administration to help mitigate export sales affected by China's retaliatory tariffs, also was closely monitored. Additionally, work was done to maintain federal funding for boll weevil eradication while coordinating an implementation strategy that will enhance boll weevil eradication efforts in Mexico and the Council coordinated implementation of a plan for pink bollworm eradication transition to post-eradication status after the USDA announced the insect pest had been eradicated from U.S. cotton producing areas. We have been working every day to deliver for America's farmers just as they work every single day to deliver for us. I looked under in between every cushion and every couch in the USDA and kind of had to convince OMB that uh, this was a program that we had to, had to do since we didn't have another safety net in Title I. Following Agriculture Secretary Sonny Perdue's announcement of a cotton ginning cost share program for a cotton producer's 2016 crop, Council Chairman Ron Kraft said, the U.S. cotton industry strongly commends Secretary Perdue for his efforts to deliver much needed marketing assistance for our nation's cotton producers. The cotton industry came very instrumental in creating a path, and frankly, uh, the good news about it is they created a path with solutions. It wasn't just a hand there, it wasn't a handout. They came with solutions about how we could do that. Later in the spring, Council Vice Chairman Mike Tate praised Secretary Perdue for implementing the Cotton Ginning Cost Share Program and his support for maintaining seed cotton in the 2018 Farm Bill. That occurred during Secretary Perdue's tour of Sam Spruill's North Alabama farm, where he participated in a roundtable discussion with producers and representatives from the Council and Alabama Farmers Federation. While uh, the cotton people are appreciative of the cost uh, uh, gin share that we did, uh, they have issues over uh, uh, an excitement about getting back into Title I, which is that safety net that the Farm Bill will do, and uh, we're encouraged about that. The Council conveyed its support of the Senate's confirmation of Bill Northey to serve as USDA's Undersecretary for Farm and Foreign Agricultural Service, and was pleased with the Senate's confirmation of key officials in the Office of U.S. Trade Representative. The omnibus spending package approved by Congress to fund the government for the remainder of fiscal year 18 included full funding for the boll weevil and pink bollworm eradication programs. The package also included funding for the USDA Agricultural Research Service Ginning Laboratories research and other programs important to the cotton industry, including the $1.25 million for research to address white fly control in the southeast for cotton and other crops.
Following Congress's passage of a supplemental disaster bill earlier in 2018, the Council expressed gratitude to members for approving the bill that included critically needed policy that restored eligibility for cotton in the Title I ARC PLC programs of 2014 farm law. The Council worked for more than two years to get stabilizing policy in place in advance of the 2018 Farm Bill. In that regard, we greatly appreciate Congress's passage earlier this month of a supplemental disaster bill that included policy that establishes seed cotton eligibility in the Title I ARC PLC programs of that Farm Bill. With the new program taking effect for this year's crop, we felt that it was important to disseminate the information as quickly as possible. The Council hosted regional information conference calls and webinars covering provisions of the recently authorized 2018 Seed Cotton Farm Program. The webinars, held for Council members, covered specifics such as examples of support levels under various price scenarios and examples of generic base conversion options. The Council prepared and posted on its website a 2018 Seed Cotton Program Summary, a 2018 Seed Cotton PLC Payment Matrix, and a frequently asked questions document addressing numerous questions received during the NCC webinars. Later, the Council posted answers to additional questions along with updates from USDA regarding the policy's implementation, worked with the Farm Service Agency to ensure the legislation was implemented consistent with congressional intent and purpose, and vigorously reminded producer members of this program's sign-up deadline. How did that work out for you? The cotton farmer was standing on line. There must have been 40 farmers, all of them really badly hurt, some devastated, some wiped out. And he said, sir, I've been doing and growing cotton for 25 years. And he was crying. He said, this was the best crop I've ever grown. My initial estimate is anywhere from 30 to 80 percent, and it varies a good bit from field to field. The council assessed the damages from Hurricanes Florence and Michael and worked with industry leadership in the affected areas to submit recommendations to Congress regarding options to provide needed relief to cotton producers and other crop producers. That included the council joining with regional and state cotton organizations and state farm bureaus in the southeast and sending correspondence to the leadership of the House and Senate Agriculture Committees and Agriculture Appropriations Subcommittees. The letter, which requested an agricultural disaster relief package in response to the two hurricanes' devastation, noted the significant need that existed due to an estimated $800 million plus in cotton losses in Alabama, Florida, Georgia, North Carolina, and South Carolina. I ain't trying to get them to fix it where I can make $100,000 just fix it where I won't lose anymore. I can't lose anymore and survive right on. I just can't keep going back. Throughout 2018, the council consistently expressed its support of farm law reauthorization. I urge my colleagues to stand by the hardworking families that put food on our tables and clothes on our backs and still live every day by the values that made this country truly great. Let's stand up for rural America. Let's pass this farm bill. The council conveyed its appreciation of House Agriculture Committee Chairman Mike Conaway's introduction of the Agriculture and Nutrition Act of 2018. The bill continued several key policies important to cotton producers and the entire U.S. cotton industry. Prior to the committee's session to consider H.R. 2, the council and 45 other cotton organizations sent correspondence to Chairman Conaway, noting their support for his committee's consideration of the bill. Simultaneously, the NCC prepared and posted on its website a summary of select H.R. 2 provisions for NCC members. In mid-May, the Council urged the House to approve H.R. 2 without any damaging amendments to farm policy. The vote on the question of passage of H.R. 2. Following House passage of the Agriculture and Nutrition Act of 2018 by a 213 to 211 vote in June, the Council issued its strong support of the farm policy provisions in that legislation and believed its passage was an extremely important and strong step toward providing much needed stability to the U.S. cotton industry. Prior to the Senate Agriculture, Nutrition and Forestry Committee's consideration and eventual approval of its version of the Farm Bill, the Council and 68 other organizations urged support for the bill and opposition to any damaging amendments. After the Senate passed its version of the 2018 Farm Bill in late June, the Council noted some serious shortcomings with the bill and stated that it did look forward to working with its supporters in the House and Senate throughout the conference committee process to achieve the U.S. cotton industry's policy priorities in the final legislation. This Farm Bill meets the needs of producers across all regions and all crops. And with trade and market uncertainty to say the least, it provides certainty 
for our trade promotion and research programs. The good thing about agriculture is we're producing more. We need more all overseas markets. We don't need to be barriers come, you know, coming into our market. Following China's announcement of significantly higher proposed tariffs on U.S. raw cotton shipped to China, the National Cotton Council expressed concern that the tariffs would significantly harm the U.S. cotton industry's economic health. Following Agriculture Secretary Sonny Perdue's mid-year announcement that USDA would assist farmers in response to trade damage from unjustified retaliation, the Council conveyed its support for the Trump administration's interim action until better trade relationships could be restored and improved. The Council joined groups representing manufacturers, farmers, and agribusinesses, wholesalers, retailers, importers, exporters, distributors, transportation and logistics providers, and other supply chain stakeholders, expressing deep concern about a breakdown in negotiations on a labor contract extension for East and Gulf Coast ports that was to expire in 2018. After the announcement of the new U.S.-Mexico-Canada agreement, the Council pointed out that the agreement will ensure continued duty-free access for U.S. cotton to Mexico and Canada, with Mexico representing a top five export market for U.S. raw cotton. The Council consistently conveyed the industry's positions and concerns to congressional members and key government agency officials regarding critical legislative, trade, regulatory, and environmental matters. In advance of the 2018 Farm Bill debate, the Council and all of its interest organizations across the seven industry segments mobilized a strong grassroots effort to help defeat any damaging amendments and build support for the passing of the Agriculture and Nutrition Act of 2018. The Council utilized social media across Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, podcast via YouTube, LinkedIn, and Instagram. The Council utilized key communications vehicles such as its Cotton's Week newsletter, radio news lines, videos, and columns in various trade publications for disseminating key information to its members. The Council's website continued to be a significant tool for the timely sharing of important information to Council members and other interested groups. Weekly RFD TV segments highlighting important industry issues continued to be produced. Comprehensive communication support was provided for multiple Council-coordinated Cotton Foundation special projects. The Cotton Council continued its support of the Cotton Leads program. Among those joining the program's 540-plus partners in 2018 were J.C. Penney and Wrangler, which announced that it wanted to double its use of cotton acquired through the company's Sustainable Cotton Program. The Council addressed a wide range of regulatory matters important to the U.S. cotton industry. Among those were support for a bill to correct problems with the Endangered Species Act, support of regulatory reforms included in the horticulture title of the 2018 Farm Bill, and support of regulatory transparency so long as it did not hamper EPA's pesticide office using subscription-only data blanks. The Council joined more than 170 co-signers on correspondence to House Agriculture Committee leadership urging support for inclusion of the National Pollutant Discharge Elimination System legislative fix. My administration is in the process of rolling back a rule that hit our farmers and ranchers very, very hard. The terrible waters of the United States rule. You know about that. Early in 2018, the Supreme Court issued a unanimous opinion that the challenges to the waters of the U.S., or WOTUS, rule would be heard in district courts and not circuit courts. As a result, the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Sixth Circuit lifted its nationwide stay of the Obama administration's rule. The Council continued to work with EPA to ensure it evaluated crop protection products using science-based data so producers could access the necessary tools and technology needed to efficiently produce high-quality crops. The Council, along with 20 cotton producer organizations, also responded to EPA's draft human health risk assessment for glyphosate's re-registration. The comments highlighted glyphosate's historical safety record and the consensus among countries that it poses no risk to human health. The Council also submitted comments to EPA supporting the registration of a new active targeting nematodes in cotton. The comments emphasized that because control of nematodes is a critical challenge for U.S. cotton production, the Council continues to support the registrations and re-registrations of safe products for cotton production. 
USDA approved the Joint Cotton Industry Bale Packaging Committee 2018 specification recommendations for cotton bale packaging materials for Commodity Credit Corporation loan program purposes. The Council and the National Cotton Jenners Association filed comments with the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration to help clarify future guidance on how agricultural commodities are treated under the Federal Hours of Service and Electronic Logging Device rules. Prior to 19 years ago, I was a producer on the outside looking in and I said to myself, you know, we should be able to get rid of this pest. The council welcomed USDA's announcement that U.S. cotton is free, after more than 100 years, of the devastating pink bollworm. Agriculture Secretary Sonny Perdue, who made the announcement at a ceremony in Washington, D.C., said the pink bollworm had cost U.S. producers tens of millions of dollars in yearly control costs and yield losses. Clyde Sharp, an Arizona producer who chairs the NCC Pink Bullworm Action Committee with Ted Sheely, a California producer, attended the ceremony along with NCC President and CEO Gary Adams. This right here is what winds up in the gin if you're not careful. The council developed a comprehensive video with educational information for the prevention of plastic contamination in seed cotton and lint. The video focused on best management practices to handle and process round modules, with a specific goal of preventing contamination from module wrap. The council urged producers and gin managers to utilize the video, which was mailed to interest organizations and all U.S. gins. We submit that the United States produces the most sustainable cotton of any country in the world for several reasons. The Cotton USA Sustainability Task Force, which set goals in 2017 to build upon the strong environmental gains already achieved over the past 30 years, expanded this effort through the U.S. Cotton Trust Protocol. The protocol is an integrated data collection, measurement, and verification procedure that will document U.S. cotton production practices and their environmental impact. Task Force Chairman Ted Schneider introduced the protocol to attendees at the CCI's Cotton Sourcing USA Summit. He noted that a protocol pilot would be conducted in 2019 with full implementation plan for 2020. Cotton Council International, the National Cotton Council's export promotion arm, continued to play a pivotal role in expanding foreign demand for U.S. cotton fiber, yarn, and other cotton products. CCI showcased U.S. cotton's quality, sustainability, transparency, premium value, and innovation as it promoted U.S. cotton in more than 50 countries under its Cotton USA trademark. CCI promoted its What's New in Cotton initiative at multiple events throughout 2018. Cotton USA promoted innovative technologies to mills, fabric manufacturers, brands and retailers at Cotton Days in Japan and Taiwan, as well as the 2018 China Cotton Days celebrations in Beijing and Shanghai. Events which showcased innovative U.S. cotton products from technology and fashion partners to the global cotton supply chain and offered attendees a comprehensive look at the continuous explorations of Cotton USA in areas of innovation, creativity, technology, and fashion. The U.S. textile industry was promoted via the third Cotton USA sourcing fair in Hong Kong, where global sourcing assistance was provided for companies looking for U.S. cotton fiber and yarns to manufacture high-quality textile products. The Cotton Foundation Board of Trustees approved funding for 10 general research projects totaling $197,000 for 2018-19. Included are studies related to pest management, sustainability, regulatory issue information gathering, and education. Some foundation member firms continue to provide grants over and above their dues to fund special projects. Among those programs were Emerging Leaders, Multi-Commodity Education, Policy Education, and the Producer Information Exchange. Several foundation members also support the Council-coordinated Veltwide Cotton Conferences and various functions of the Council's annual meeting. In addition, the Foundation's underpinning of the web server made it possible for the Council to continue posting valuable education materials, including streaming video for industry members. The Council is making a concerted effort to educate the industry about the problems we face and about the best ways to address these issues. Looking into 2019 and beyond, many issues, challenges, and opportunities remain. Council staff and leadership will work together to actively manage those issues that face the industry in the months to come. Strong industry participation in the organization and politically active industry leaders will continue to be needed in order to assure future success for U.S. cotton. 
With the structure in place and the visionary leadership being so willing to assist, the industry is well positioned for the future.